saw me on top of another man when he got back from work, so he took brutal revenge. These past few days have had me worried, and I can't think straight. Long story short, my life is falling apart, and I can't put it back together. I would like to share my story with you guys so you won't make the same mistake as I did. I should have been patient with my marriage and not destroyed it by seeking someone else's touch. Hi Redditors, my name is Olivia and I just turned 25 years ago. It wasn't a celebratory birthday because that was when things started to get ruined. I can't remember my childhood memory and I don't know why, but I think it was never important. After all, our family didn't have much drama. We were a family of three based on the fact that I was the only child. The little memory I remember was that I had transferred school when I was 10 because they were renovating our house then and it was going to take some time. My family stayed with some relatives until our house was completed. Uh, during that time, I know I met this boy and his name was Mark. Mark was this silent boy who didn't talk much to anyone around. We also attended the same school then and I usually watched when they bullied him, but because he didn't talk or complain, they got tired and stopped. This particular day, someone pushed him and his bag fell to the ground and opened so all the books fell out. I rushed over to him to help him with the packing and that was how both of us started talking. He told me thank you and I remember his tiny voice saying, you're welcome. He was two years older than me and he didn't talk much about himself, but he laughed at the things I said. The next day, we started going to school together because coincidentally, his house was close to that of our relatives. He was my childhood friend, not until one year passed by. I was 11 years already. My parents told me we were leaving and I threw a tantrum because I didn't want to leave. I think it was more of, I didn't want to leave Mark because we were so close. I never even had the chance to tell Mark because it was so sudden. I cried all through the journey of us going back to our own place. There's a reason I'm telling you readers about Mark because he carries most of the story. When we got to the house, I still cried in my room. Months had passed then and I put Mark at the back of my mind. I started another school, and that's the part I can't remember much. I turned 15 and I started high school. I didn't make any new friends or expect much from anyone because I had already set my mind to the fact that I shouldn't get attached or make very close friends because we were going to end up being apart. College started by the time I was 19 and that was where I met Henry who was 20. Henry was a very gentle person in college and I noticed he didn't like attention much. I met him in my second year of college in class. The lecturer gave us an assignment and left the class. Henry walked up to me and asked if I could teach him something because he noticed I was asking questions previously and it looked like I understood it. I laughed and told him I did understand it and I could teach him. I became his tutor after that and he passed the exams that we had. He thanked me and said he liked spending time with me. I also liked spending time with him and he asked me out on a date. I accepted and I learned some things about him. Henry told me his life story. He also came from a family of three just like me and he was the only son. Both of us being the only child in the family was one of the things we had in common. He loved reading and playing video games, and I loved them too. He asked me what I wanted to become in four years' time, and I told him I had no idea because I really had none. I never thought that far about where I was going in life, and I just wanted to flow with whatever I was doing and see where it led me. He told me he wanted to be a pilot, and I thought about how it was great that he had a goal in mind. College was over and I was glad I was done with that. I was 22 years old by then. What I was glad about more was the fact that Henry and I had been together since second year started and nothing had come between us. I loved Henry so much and I wanted to spend my life with him, or that's what I thought at first. My family had met with Henry's family because Henry insisted and wanted to take our relationship to the next level. One particular night, he told me we were going on a dinner date and told me to dress up. I did, and he took me to a fancy restaurant. Everything was going great, but what shocked me the most was when he got down on one knee and proposed. I was so surprised and without any thinking, I told him yes. When I got engaged, he told me that he was working towards his goal of becoming a pilot, and he wanted to provide me with everything I wanted so we won't lack things. We discussed having kids, and both of us didn't want any, so we decided we weren't having any. I asked if the family would understand, but he said he didn't care because me and him were a family and the decision was between us. We got married five months after he proposed to me and the marriage was a huge one. We tried planning it, but both our families said it was a big moment, so they invited lots of their friends. I was tired by the time we finished the wedding and the reception, but I won't lie that it was an enjoyable moment. 
Henry had surprised me that night of our wedding that he bought an apartment for us. The first time I stepped in the house, I was amazed because it was a huge place. We settled into the house and life was going great. Henry said he was taking classes for his pilot lessons, but it was online just for training, so there were no complaints because he had my time. I think the changes started when he said he had to take physical classes. He would leave early because the training started early. I didn't know how pilot's trainings worked, but it sounded stressful. Most times when he left, it was so lonely in that big house, and I found myself thinking of random thoughts like, should I adopt a pet to be less lonely, and things like that. I decided to get a job because I couldn't sit down in the house all day waiting for Henry to come back. I studied accounting in college, so I figured I should at least use my degree for something. I ended up getting a job in the bank as an accountant, and it was stressful. The customers were annoying and not letting me think straight most times. I won't lie that most times I came to work, I poured my frustrations on the customers. By that, I mean if they talked to me with a tone or attitude, I gave them the same energy. This happened for two months, and it was like a cycle of Henry going for lessons and training while I went to work. I usually got back before him because he mostly arrived late at night and he was always tired. The only time I got his time was on a weekend because that was when he was free. I was about to tell him that I didn't like how he didn't have enough time for me because we just got married recently and he didn't have my time. At the same time, I wanted to speak, but he said something too. I told him to go on first and he started talking. He told me that he was going to be riding a plane for the first time, but as an assistant. He was very happy, so I didn't know how to inform him about how I felt. I didn't want to ruin his happy moment, so I kept it to myself. He was gone for two days, and I got worried that he didn't contact me, but I still went to work that day. His phone wasn't ringing, and I stayed up till 1 a.m. that day. He apologized and said he had to put his phone on airplane mode due to the interference. I guess I understood in a way, but it also sounded like an excuse, and I started thinking he didn't love me anymore. I focused on my accounting job for another two months and things were the same. Henry told me his job was going great and he was no longer training. He was getting paid now and I saw how excited he was when he told me. I still couldn't bring myself to say how lonely I felt, but I thought it didn't matter. Before I knew it, I turned 24 and I felt so empty. I wished things would change and I think my wish came true. On one of my normal days at work, I heard we were going to get a new manager at work, and it was someone no one knew. Obviously, I didn't pay it much attention since I didn't take the job seriously and just wanted to use it to pass time. The manager came, but I didn't bother waiting to see who he was because I wanted to go home. The next day, my coworker informed me that the manager wanted to see me. That was very weird because I know I did nothing wrong, but I still thought maybe I made a little mistake with the accounts. The coworkers told me some things before I entered his office. They said I shouldn't get worried because they had met with him and he looked like a chilled person. They also said he had called some people in and he just wanted to know the people working under him. I thanked my coworker and knocked on the door. A voice said come in and there was someone standing next to the window talking on the phone. I couldn't see his face well, but I waited for him to finish his call. He didn't look back, but he told me to sit down and I did. One minute hadn't passed yet when he got off the call and sat down on his chair. I was able to get a good look at his face, and it clicked to me that he looked so familiar. He smiled, and I knew I recognized the person, but I didn't know who it was. He said my name and asked if it was me, and I said yes. Then he said his name was Mark. I can remember him fully now. Mark, the young timid kid I had met when I was 10, and now 14 years had passed, and we were meeting ourselves again, coincidentally. It was indeed a very small world. I put my hand over my face because I was shocked and he laughed. We were friends for one year, but for some reasons, childhood friendship seems more real than the adult one you make immediately. I asked him if I could hug him due to the fact that we were friends when we were kids, and it was a memory we both couldn't forget. He said sure and I hugged him. He said he still remembered how we were during our childhood and how he stopped seeing me one day and those days turned to years. He also said that he was looking through the worker's files and he was surprised when he saw my name. So he needed to confirm that it was me and not someone with the same name as me. He said he wanted to talk to me more and he asked me if I was free after work. It was a Friday then and I asked him if we could talk on Saturday so he said no worries. I gave him my contacts and he said he was going to call me. 
I got back home a bit excited that day knowing that I had someone to talk to and I won't be lonely all the time. I was thinking I needed an excuse to tell my husband that I would be going out on his free day. But on Saturday, he told me that something came up and he had to go to work again and he wouldn't be back for some days. I told him there were no worries and he kissed me. My husband left at eight in the morning, but his work was due for 10. He usually went early most times, but I was glad this time. I went to clean up and waited for Mark's call. I was starting to think he wasn't going to call, but by 11 a.m. I saw an unknown number flash on my phone screen. I picked it and heard Mark's voice. He asked me if I knew anywhere we could go because he had just come to the city and he didn't know much. I told him there was a restaurant near the office and I would meet him there, so we agreed on that. It didn't take long for me to get there, but I couldn't see him anywhere. Five minutes later, I saw him and I waved. He apologized for being late and said he had some issues with his car. He ordered food for both of us and I began the conversation. I told him about the fact that I couldn't remember anything much, but I could remember when we were friends. I also told him about the whole house renovation we were doing then and also the reason we suddenly moved. We discussed a lot of things. He told me that he also learned accounting in school and he was surprised after I told him I did the same. We laughed a lot and it was satisfying because I was no longer feeling as lonely as I used to. I found myself wanting to talk to Mark more. He said something like it must have been fate that brought us together and I couldn't agree less. I told him I got married and about my husband being a pilot. Mark congratulated me and said he had a girlfriend but she broke up with him. The meeting with him was great and we decided to meet up another time and day. Of course, I didn't tell my husband any of this because I thought there was no need and it was just an outing with a childhood friend, so it was no big deal. The cycle with my husband continued with him traveling all the time and coming back days later with which he tells me about his journey. He said he's planning for both of us to have a vacation just by ourselves. We went on a honeymoon when we got married, but he wanted us to have fun by ourselves again. I said it was a great idea and then he traveled again. In a way, I was happy about that because it meant I had time to go on another date with Mark. It wasn't a date per se, but I felt like it was one. Mark chose another date for us to meet, but this time it was in a fancy restaurant. I knew it was weird with the fact that I was a married woman going out with a man, but I saw it as just me going out with someone who was once my childhood friend. We talked more again and I think I was getting drunk at one point. He noticed I was drunk so he told me to calm down with the drinks, but I brushed him off and said I wasn't drunk. I should have listened to him because I remember I started talking about my married life when I was drunk. The memory is still a bit unclear, but I know I was spilling out how I was lonely in the relationship and how I didn't feel like Henry was still in love with me. I spilled out most things and I can't even remember what it is. I tried going home that night, but he said that I was too drunk to drive and he volunteered to drive me to his place since he stayed alone. I was about to protest, but I didn't, because if I had gone home, it was going to be lonely since Henry was not around. I accepted his ride and he took me back to his place. I never imagined how his place was, but when I saw it, I realized that it was a small place and somewhere I wanted to stay compared to the big house I was all alone in. I don't know what came over me when he placed me on the bed because I couldn't walk well. I know that I put my hands around his arms and pulled him in, which made him fall on the bed and we both burst out in laughter. The next thing that happened felt like a dream when he came closer to my face and kissed me. I was married and I thought I shouldn't be doing this but I don't know what came over me and I felt myself accepting the kiss. Till now, I still can't believe that I had slept with Mark. The next day I woke up naked with the blankets wrapped around me and I saw Mark standing over me. He sat beside me on the bed and apologized for what we did that night, but I told him it was not his fault. He said he knew I was married and he shouldn't have crossed the boundaries. Then we said everything was all right and it was not going to happen again. We should have stopped there and nothing should have happened after that. I couldn't tell my husband about it since it was just a silly mistake that happened. Mark asked me out again and said nothing was going to happen but another cycle happened. And before I knew it, I ended up sleeping with him three times. It's unbelievable, I know, and I wished I had stopped it. There was just something about Mark that was different. It was something Henry didn't give me. We wanted to stop what we were doing because it was exactly an affair. And each time we said it would stop, we ended up sleeping together again. I did it with my husband too, but it felt different with Mark. It was something I hated and loved at the same time. 
We weren't mixing business with pleasures. In our free time, we went on different dates, but I planned it well so I wouldn't get caught by my husband. You know the saying that goes every day for the thief and one day for the owner? Well, yes, I got caught. How I got caught feels like a dream anytime I think of it. Uh, I didn't want to go out that day, but I was supposed to meet up with Mark. I was strangely tired and didn't want to do anything. My husband left early that morning for work again, and he wasn't supposed to come back till another two days' time. I invited Mark over because I saw it as a great chance since I was free. We said we were not going to do anything, but before we knew it, we had already started kissing on the bed, and I was on top of him naked. I don't know how I didn't hear the main door open, but I heard Henry's voice come from behind me. He said something in the terms of what the heck is going on, but with more insulting words. I could tell he was very upset, and anyone would be upset if they saw their wife on top of another man. I told Mark to leave, and he packed his clothes and ran out of the room while I saw Henry give him a deadly look. I told him I could explain and that it was a mistake. He didn't say anything, but I could see his face fuming with anger. I asked him what he was doing back at home when he just left, and he said the plane he was supposed to fly out was undergoing maintenance and the work was postponed. He also said that he had been thinking that he wasn't spending time with me, and he was happy to come back home to spend time with me, but he wasn't annoyed at me anymore. He was just disappointed. That was heart-wrecking to hear. It would have been better for him to be upset with me than disappointed because those words felt heartbreaking. I know I deserved what happened, but that wasn't where it ended. He asked me how long it had been going on and I came clean with him, telling him the truth. There was no use hiding it from him anymore. As expected, the next words he said was that he wanted a divorce. I expected him to say that, but I begged him saying we could make our marriage better. I told him I messed up and I deserved this, but he should reconsider the divorce. That the next day, he said the plane was fixed and he was going to be gone for a week. He said by the time he got back, I should have moved out of the house. I begged him, but he didn't listen. I can't go back to my family housed in shame. I'm still trying to contact Mark, but he isn't picking up his calls. Update. There's not much update to give. My marriage life is ruined. I contacted Mark and he told me to not call him anymore. He said he didn't want to get caught up in any mess. I told him I just needed a place to stay, but he said he wanted nothing to do with me. I didn't know Mark had this side to him. Henry came back like he said he would. He was wondering why I hadn't packed my bags, but he said he suspected I wouldn't have. He also came back with divorce papers because in his words, it would chase me away and do the job quicker. And I was devastated. He was going to take everything we had and it was all going to belong to him. I complained and said it wasn't fair, but he said I had no right to say that, considering how much I had cheated on him. I didn't know that he had also informed my parents because some hours later, I had more than 10 missed calls and different messages from my family and his family. I talked to my mom, and she told me she was ashamed of me. I signed the divorce papers because I had no choice and I left the house. I am currently at my parents' house, but they aren't talking to me. I wish I could go back to the beginning to change things, but I can't. I hope the readers out there won't cheat on their partner all because they weren't giving you attention and you were lonely. Learn from my mistakes. Hi Reddit, Kenneth here. You know, I always thought I had a pretty good handle on life. A stable job as a software engineer, a comfortable apartment in San Francisco, and a marriage that, while not perfect, seems solid enough. But I guess life has a way of throwing curvy balls when you least expect it. Let me take you back to how this all began a day that started like any other, but ended up turning my world upside down. It was a typical foggy morning in the city. Melissa, my wife, had already left for her job at the marketing firm. I was working from home as usual, my day planned out with meetings and code debugging. Our apartment, a quaint space with a view of the bustling streets below, was unusually quiet without her presence. As I was getting ready to dive into my work, I noticed something odd under our bed. It was a small, leather-bound book, partially hidden under the loose floorboard that we always kept meaning to fix but never got around to. Curiosity got the better of me, and I pulled it out. It was Melissa's diary. Now, I'm not the type to pry into someone's private thoughts, but something about the way it was hidden made me pause. I flipped through the pages, and that's when my world stopped. The diary detailed Melissa's secret meetings not with clients or friends, but other men. The level of detail was staggering. Descriptions of dates, emotions, even intimate moments. I sat there, the diary in my hands, feeling a mix of disbelief and betrayal wash over me. 
How long had this been going on? Why would Melissa do this? Our marriage had its ups and downs, sure, but I never suspected she would step outside it. I tried to process it all. The diary entries ranged over several months, and the realization that my wife had been living this double life right under my nose was gut-wrenching. I felt like a fool, the last to know about the reality of my own marriage. I closed the diary, my mind racing with questions. Do I confront her right away? Do I gather more evidence? What do I even say? The trust I had in Melissa, in us, felt shattered. As I sat in our quiet apartment, surrounded by memories of a relationship that now felt like a lie, I knew one thing for sure I couldn't just let this go. There had to be a confrontation. But first, I needed to figure out how to handle this bombshell. So Reddit, that's where my story begins. The day I found out my wife was cheating on me, and the day my quest for the truth and for what to do about it started. Stay tuned because believe me, it gets even more complicated from here. Hey again Reddit, Kenneth here. After finding Melissa's diary, my world was spinning. I couldn't just sit there with my emotions boiling over. I needed answers, hard evidence. So I decided to do something I never thought I'd do. I started my own secret mission gathering evidence to confront Melissa about her affairs. Here's how that chapter of my life unfolded. In the days following the discovery, I became obsessed with confirming the diary's revelations. I started looking back at the past months, sifting through our shared memories for any signs I might have missed. It was like watching a movie where you already know the plot twist, and suddenly all the subtle hints make sense. I remembered the late night calls Melissa said were from her office, her sudden interest in new hobbies, and the weekends she spent visiting her parents. The more I thought about it, the more the pieces started falling into place. The inconsistencies were there, hidden in plain sight. Then came the hardest part gathering more evidence. I felt like a detective in my own home, trying to piece together the reality of my wife's double life. I checked bank statements for unusual expenses, looked for receipts, and even started paying attention to her routine and the way she dressed for work. One evening, I followed her. Yeah, I know how it sounds, but I had to see for myself. I watched from a distance as she met some guy in a cozy downtown restaurant. They were laughing, touching. It was more than just a friendly meetup. That sight, guys, it was like a punch in the gut. My Melissa with someone else. It was real, and it hurt like hell. I also started taking notes, keeping a log of her comings and goings, matching them with the entries in her diary. It was meticulous and emotionally draining work. I felt like a stranger in my own life, spying on my own wife. But with every new piece of evidence, my resolve hardened. I couldn't confront her without being absolutely sure. I couldn't risk her talking her way out of it with excuses. I needed undeniable proof, something she couldn't deny or twist. And as much as I was gathering evidence, I was also preparing myself emotionally. Each new discovery was a blow, but it also steeled me for the inevitable confrontation. I was building a case not just against Melissa's actions, but also against the life of lies we had been living. So there I was, Reddit, a regular guy turned amateur detective, uncovering the painful truth of my marriage bit by bit. And let me tell you, nothing prepares you for something like this, but I had to keep going. I needed to see this through for my own sanity. Stay tuned because this rabbit hole goes deeper and the confrontation. Well, let's just say it was anything but ordinary. Hey Reddit, it's Kenneth again. So where were we? Ah, yes, the aftermath of my newfound career as a detective in my own love story gone wrong. But let me tell you, gathering evidence was just one part of the ordeal. The real battle was happening inside me, a tornado of emotions that I could barely keep in check. Every day felt like walking through a storm. Anger, sadness, betrayal, these words don't even begin to cover what I was feeling. I was angry at Melissa for her deception, sad about the crumbling of our marriage, and felt utterly betrayed by the person I trusted the most. Sleep became a distant memory. I'd lie awake at night, replaying everything in my mind. What did I do wrong? Were there signs I ignored? It was like a never-ending loop of doubt and self-blame. My work started to suffer, and I found myself zoning out, lost in thoughts. That's when I realized I needed to talk to someone. Bottling up wasn't helping. I decided to confide in my closest friend, Mike. He's been my buddy since college, the kind of friend who's more like a brother. I remember that conversation vividly. We met at our usual spot, a small cafe downtown, away from the prying eyes of our regular haunts. The moment I started telling him everything, from the diary to my late night sleuthing, I could see the shock on his face. Man, I had no idea, he said, his eyes wide with disbelief. He listened, really listened, as I poured out everything. The anger, the pain, the sense of utter betrayal. 
Mike was a rock, not interrupting, just letting me vent. After I was done, he leaned back, rubbing his chin a habit when he's deep in thought. Ken, this is messed up, but you gotta confront her. You can't live like this, man, but do it smartly. Be calm, collected. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. His words made sense, but it was easier said than done. How do you stay calm when your world is falling apart? Mike suggested I seek professional advice, maybe talk to a counselor or a lawyer before making any moves. Don't do anything rash. Think this through, he advised. That conversation with Mike was a lifeline. It didn't solve my problems, but it gave me a bit of clarity, a momentary respite from the chaos of my emotions. He was right. I couldn't let my emotions drive my actions. But that was a tall order, especially when every fiber of my being was screaming for some sort of action, some kind of retribution. So there I was, Reddit, caught in the eye of an emotional hurricane, trying to make sense of the senseless. My journey was far from over, and the hardest part was yet to come. Stay tuned because what happened next was something I never could have prepared for. Hi again Reddit, Kenneth here. After all the emotional chaos and nights of planning, it was time to face the music. I had to confront Melissa. But how? I needed a plan, a strategy that would leave no room for her to wriggle out of the truth. I wanted her to know that I knew, but more importantly, I needed to see her real reaction unfiltered and genuine. I decided the best approach was to catch her off guard. I needed the element of surprise on my side to see her raw, unguarded response. It wouldn't be easy. Melissa was sharp, and if she sensed something amiss, she might put up her defenses. I needed to be subtle, yet direct. So, I came up with a plan. I'd act normal for a few days, go about our routine as if nothing had changed. This part was tough Reddit. Acting like everything was okay, talking and laughing with her, all the while knowing what I knew it felt like playing a role in a twisted play. During these days, I paid extra attention to her habits, her schedule. I noticed she'd been a bit distracted lately, probably due to her own guilt. I used this to my advantage. I told her I had to go on a sudden business trip for a couple of days, a believable lie, given my job. But instead of going on a trip, I stayed in the city, at a friend's place. The plan was to return home unexpectedly the next evening, when she'd likely be feeling relaxed, thinking she had the apartment to herself. That evening, my heart was pounding as I made my way back to our apartment. The closer I got, the more the suspense built up. It felt like I was stepping into a showdown, the climax of a story that had been building up for far too long. I reached our building, took a deep breath, and walked up to our door. My hand was shaking a bit as I unlocked it. The apartment was quiet. I stepped in, trying to make as little noise as possible. There she was, in the living room, a glass of wine in her hand, completely unaware of my return. She looked up, startled, as I walked in. Kenneth, what are you doing here? I thought you were. Her voice trailed off as she saw the look on my face. Surprised to see me? I asked, my voice steady but cold. The look on her face read it. It was a mix of shock, fear, and something else guilt, maybe. It was hard to read. But one thing was clear. She hadn't expected me. And that's exactly what I wanted. Kenneth, what's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? She stammered, setting her wine glass down. We need to talk, Melissa. It's about time we had a real conversation, I said, my heart racing, but my voice calm. And there we were, standing in our living room, the stage set for a confrontation that had been brewing for far too long. The air was thick with tension, and I knew that whatever happened next would change everything. So, Reddit, this was the moment of truth. The moment I'd been preparing for. Stay tuned, because what came next was a conversation I'll never forget. Hey Reddit, Kenneth here again. The moment had arrived the confrontation I had been both dreading and eagerly anticipating. My heart was racing as I stood there in our living room facing Melissa. This was it, the moment of truth. Melissa, we need to talk about your meetings, I began, trying to keep my voice steady. Her eyes widened slightly, a hint of panic flickering across her face. What meetings? I don't know what you're talking about, Kenneth, she replied, her voice a mix of confusion and defensiveness. I could feel the anger bubbling inside me but I knew I had to keep it in check. I'm talking about the meetings you've been having with other men, Melissa, the ones you've written about in your diary. I watched her closely, looking for any sign of her crumbling facade. Her face turned pale. My diary, you read my diary, she gasped, her voice rising. That's private, you had no right. I was ready for this, the deflection, the outrage. I think I had every right when it concerns our marriage, I countered firmly. I found it by accident, but what I read. Melissa, how could you? 
She started pacing, her hands ringing together. Kenneth, you're misunderstanding things. It's not what you think. They're just fantasies, nothing real. I haven't cheated on you. But I was prepared. Fantasies. Is that why I found receipts for hotels, charges for dinners at places we've never been together? Is that why you've been so distant lately? Her eyes darted around the room, as if looking for an escape. Kenneth, please, you're blowing this out of proportion. I love you. I would never do anything to hurt you. The denials, the gaslighting, it was all there. But I had one more card to play. Melissa, I followed you one evening. I saw you with him. I saw the way you were together. The color drained from her face. There was a long, heavy silence. Then, in a barely audible whisper, she said, You followed me? Yes, Melissa. I needed to know the truth, and now I do. My voice was calm, but inside, I was a storm of emotions. The room was thick with tension. Melissa sat down, her posture deflated, the fight gone out of her. Kenneth, I... I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. Sorry. The word echoed in my mind. Was it enough? Could it ever be enough? So there we were, read it, in the ruins of our marriage, surrounded by the debris of lies and betrayal. The confrontation I had imagined so many times had unfolded, but the feeling of victory I had expected was nowhere to be found. Instead, there was just emptiness, a hollow realization that things would never be the same again. Stay tuned, folks. The story doesn't end here. The aftermath of that confrontation led me down paths I never expected to walk. Hey Reddit, Kenneth back again. After that confrontation, I thought I'd feel a sense of relief, maybe even victory. But all I felt was a crushing weight of reality sinking in. Our marriage, which I had believed to be built on love and trust, was now in shambles. Here's how I dealt with the fallout. In the days following our confrontation, our apartment became a silent battlefield. Melissa and I moved around each other like ghosts barely speaking. The air was heavy with unspoken words and lingering resentment. She tried to initiate conversations a few times, probably to explain or apologize, but I wasn't ready to hear any of it. My bold and unforgiving nature was at the forefront, leaving no room for her excuses. I spent long hours staring out the window, watching the city move while my own life felt stuck in a standstill. My mind kept replaying the confrontation, her admissions, and the years of deception. Anger and betrayal battled with the remnants of love I still felt. It was a confusing mix of emotions that I struggled to process. During this time, I leaned heavily on my friend Mike. He was my sounding board, letting me vent, offering advice, or sometimes just sitting in silence with me. His support was invaluable. But as the days passed, the practicalities of our situation started to demand attention. We couldn't continue living like this in a constant state of tension and avoidance. I began to think about separation, the logistics of it, the inevitability of it. It was a tough pill to swallow the end of a relationship I had invested so much in. One evening, I finally broke the silence. Melissa, we need to talk about what comes next. My voice was steady, but inside, I was anything but calm. We sat down, two people who had once been inseparably in love, now negotiating the terms of our separation. It was surreal, discussing who would move out, how we would divide our things, and what this meant for our future. Melissa seemed resigned, a stark contrast to her usual fiery self. Maybe she too had accepted the reality of our situation. The decision was made. I would stay in the apartment, and she would move out. We agreed to keep things as amicable as possible, for the sake of the years we had shared. But as practical as we tried to be, the emotional undercurrent was hard to ignore. This was more than just a change of living arrangements. It was the end of a chapter in our lives. In the following weeks, Melissa moved her things out. Each item she took felt like a piece of our life together being removed. It was a tangible reminder of the impermanence of relationships, of how quickly things can change. So there I was, read it, left in an apartment that once felt like a home, now just a space filled with memories. The fallout from Melissa's betrayal and our confrontation had led me here alone, trying to piece together what to do next. It was a period of reflection, of rebuilding, and most importantly, of healing. Stay with me, folks. The journey isn't over yet. The path to healing and moving forward was a road less traveled, with its own set of twists and turns. After the fallout of the confrontation and dealing with the immediate aftermath, it was time to face the future. The path to resolution was not just about putting legal and logistical pieces in place. It was also about emotional healing and rediscovering who I was without Melissa. First things first, I had to tackle the legal and practical aspects of our separation. 
It was a tedious and sometimes painful process, dealing with lawyers, diving into the nitty-gritty of who gets what, and signing papers that officially mark the end of our marriage. Each signature felt like closing a chapter, a mix of sadness and relief. I was saying goodbye to a significant part of my life, but I was also opening the door to new possibilities. During this time, I did a lot of reflecting. I thought about my relationship with Melissa, trying to understand where things went wrong. I realized that while her betrayal was the breaking point, there were signs of trouble long before the diary. We had become more like roommates than partners, comfortable, but not truly connected. I had to acknowledge my part in that. But dwelling on the past wasn't going to help me move forward. So I started planning for the future. I threw myself into work, taking on new projects that challenged and engaged me. I reconnected with old friends, went out more, and even picked up new hobbies. I started cycling, something I had always wanted to do, but never got around to. It was liberating, feeling the wind against my face, the road stretching ahead, much like my life. Mike was a constant presence, encouraging me to get out and live. You're in control now, Ken. Make the most of it, he would say. And he was right. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I was in the driver's seat of my life. I made decisions based on what I wanted, not what was expected of me or what was comfortable. Through this journey, I learned a lot about myself. I realized that I'm stronger than I thought, capable of overcoming betrayal and heartbreak. I discovered the importance of self-care, of looking after my own emotional and mental well-being. And perhaps most importantly, I learned that it's okay to let go, to move on from things that no longer serve you. So there I was, Reddit, at the end of a long and tumultuous road. The pain of the past was still a part of me, but it no longer defined me. I was moving forward, one step at a time, building a life that was all about me and my choices. Stay tuned for the final update. Hello again, Reddit. Kenneth here for one last update. It's been a journey, hasn't it? From the moment I found Melissa's diary to this point, where I'm typing out what feels like the final chapter of a long, turbulent saga. So let's dive in. The divorce is finalized now. It's strange to say it out loud, I am no longer Melissa's husband. The end of our marriage was a turning point, a definitive closure to a significant part of my life. It was hard, one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it was necessary. It marked the end of an era, but also the beginning of something new my life, on my terms. Reflecting on this entire experience, I've learned a lot. I learned about resilience, the kind that's forged in the fires of betrayal and heartbreak. I discovered strength I never knew I had, the kind that comes from picking yourself up when your world falls apart. And I learned about forgiveness, not necessarily for Melissa, but for myself. Forgiving myself for not seeing the signs, for being a part of a failed marriage. It's been a process, but I'm getting there. As for my hopes for the future, they're brighter than I ever thought possible in the midst of my ordeal. I've started to reimagine my life, exploring possibilities that were once just distant thoughts. I've been traveling more something I always wanted to do but never got around to. I've visited places I'd only seen in pictures, met new people, experienced different cultures. It's been eye-opening and incredibly liberating. I've also dived back into the dating pool, slowly but surely. I'm not rushing into anything, just enjoying meeting new people and experiencing new connections. I'm more cautious now, more aware of what I want and what I don't want in a relationship. It's a learning curve, but an exciting one. But the most significant change has been within me. I've embraced a new perspective on life, one that values the present, cherishes genuine connections, and looks forward to the future with optimism. I'm more in touch with who I am, what I want in life, and how I want to live it. So, Reddit, here I am. A man who went through one of the toughest times in his life and came out the other side stronger and more self-aware. It wasn't easy, but it was a journey worth taking. I've found closure, I've embraced my new life, and I'm excited about what the future holds. Thank you all for following my story, for your advice and your support. It's been an incredible comfort to share this journey with a community of strangers who became a part of my story. Here's to new beginnings and a future full of possibilities. Signing off, Kenneth.